great to have you here. Welcome to the podcast with me and my guests from around the world. Welcome to the Simon Filer podcast. Welcome to this podcast. Let's get into it, shall we? On the Simon Filer podcast. Rachel Downey, author of The Secret Million Dollar Paradigm, joins me on my podcast today. Rachel's work is empowering, following the law of attraction, changing paradigms and mind over matter awareness to attaining a self-made millionaire status. In her enlightening book, Rachel interviews subject leaders, including Bob Proctor, Susan Hum Ratcliffe, Brian Matson, along with other authorities, and she gives clear instructions on how you can become a self-made millionaire. Welcome, Rachel Downey. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you today. I really appreciate your time. I guess the obvious question, Rachel, is how you first found out about the law of attraction and shifting paradigms. Well, it's really interesting, I suppose, because I didn't sort of really come from it from a law of attraction point of view at all. It was really that I was in my own business. I was pouring lots of time, money and effort into it, feeling like I was banging my head against the wall and just not getting where I wanted to go. I'd been doing quite a bit of personal development on the side, um, wanting to improve myself um, in my areas as a parent. I've got four kids and my husband and I run a dairy farm. So I was just wanting to be the best version of myself that I could, but it didn't seem to matter what I did. I just kind of was stuck. And right. it wasn't until somebody shared a link with me um, and I watched some stuff of Bob Proctor and I went, oh, he's got a seminar coming up. Uh, I'm going to do that. And um, I finally found the last piece of the puzzle piece, I believe, that was keeping me stuck, which was my paradigms. I, you know, I heard about the word before, but I really didn't understand what it meant. So then you delved right into finding out exactly what it was all about, obviously. Absolutely. I was like, oh my goodness, how did I not know any of this stuff? And I think I was about 41 thereabouts. I thought, how are we not taught this stuff through school? So mm -hmm. understanding that my habits and my beliefs and my behaviors were not serving me in the interest of my business, particularly around money. Mm. So can I ask you, Rachel, hopefully it's not too personal. Did you come from a wealthy background to begin with? And what was life like for a young Rachel? Yeah, well, that's such a good question because no, I didn't really. My parents separated when I was about just before my seventh birthday and my mum had been a part-time nurse. And I remember a lot of the conversations around um, not being able to afford stuff. Um, we're not like rich people, um, yada, yada, yada. You know, probably similar things to what uh, your listeners maybe have heard of before. Yeah. But um, my mum got sick and as a result lost her job. And we ended up living in a housing department area, um, having to receive handouts from the church and other organizations and um, the school that I was in that I, I was going to have to be pulled out of in high school. Um, the nuns or the sisters at the time basically took me on and paid for my education. So I really experienced what I call a bit of a scarcity, lack, poverty mindset when it came to money. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, I've taken that through, even though I had a paid job as a full-time teacher, I still had the mindset that I didn't have enough. So when did it first start working for you after you found Bob Proctor and started listening to it? When was the first realization like, oh, okay, this is how it so works. Then I had what I call an emotional impact in the seminar that I was watching online. So mm. I'm in Tasmania, he was presenting something in Canada and I got up at 11 o'clock at night to watch these seminars. I was just so enamored in the information. And when I say an emotional impact, I broke down in tears and went, oh my God, I am not broken. Mm. There is nothing wrong with me. And my entire life, that little voice in my head had been telling me that I wasn't good enough, that um, everybody else was better than me. And I was continually judging and berating myself. So for me, that was the first switch in my mind of, I actually, I am enough. I am okay. And then I got on the phone and, you know, rang the organization and said, I want to do that. I want to understand this and I want to, I want to go out and teach it. This is what I, I really want to do. So I started to work on myself first. One of the key things about our paradigms is that 
you know, we don't know how long they've been there for because we receive them from our parents, their parents, their parents, etc., and mm. from the environment we've been exposed to. So I would say that it was probably after the first six months of working on myself and really starting to pull out in my mind what thoughts were serving me and what thoughts weren't and becoming very clear on that, that's when my results started to change. But I want to go back from money a bit. It really was about my self-image paradigm. And I think the great example I share within the book was that I really didn't know what I was um, in the sense of what I was capable of doing. I knew I wanted something better, but I didn't believe that it was possible for me. Right. I was literally the movie of my life was like a supporting actress in my husband's movie. He right. knew what he wanted to do. He had a, an amazing vision and I was literally helping him build what he wanted because I really didn't know what I wanted but I hadn't given myself permission to go there. So when I started to change that self-image, um, and this was from the inside out, my beliefs started to change. My self-worth started to change. Opportunities came my way as I started to switch my belief as to what was possible for me. So how did you go about like changing your belief? Was Did that start with meditation or how did it you know, begin to grow, obviously? So yeah. So I worked through the material that I work through with my clients now, um, particularly in a program called Think Into Results. So, so I, it was something I wanted to be able to get out into Australia for education and teaching people how to use their mind because I'd been a teacher for 15 years. I'd studied for 21 and um, nobody had taught me how to use my mind and nobody had, you know, I'd never taught anyone how to use their mind. So one of the first things I did was learning how to rewrite my own movie of my life from the inside out. So instead of being a supporting actress, I started to become the lead role in my movie. What did I really want to be doing? How would I love my life to be? And I started to write that out. Mm, that's very right. cool. Now, it didn't all ho happen overnight, but literally the movie that I wrote, it happened. Keep and going. That's your suggestion to everyone. Just write that movie and have the belief and keep going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Keep going. So I do remember conversations. So I, you know, I've been conditioned um, to the way that I was going to succeed in life was to go and get a good education. So that's what I did, but I had countless degrees, but it didn't seem to matter what I did. It was not enough. So it wasn't knowledge that was the problem. It was the paradigms that were limiting this. So I started this journey on personal development, as I said, and I would have spent thousands of dollars thinking I was broken and needing fixing. And I remember my husband saying, you know, you've done all of these courses, you know, when is it going to come back? When is the money that you've put out going to come back? And I remember Bob talking about the best investment you can ever invest in is yourself. It gives the highest return. So you cannot go to a shop and buy confidence. You can't go to a shop and buy belief. You can't go and buy feeling a sense of freedom and feeling happy within yourself. They're all things that have to happen from the inside out. And that's what this material and, and working alongside of this is, which is why I wanted to write the book. We're saying this is an inside job. You've got to change what's on the inside so you can change what's on the outside. Absolutely. You ended up joining up with the Bob Proctor Institute. How did that come about? Yeah, well, it literally, um, like I said, it was October 6, 2016, when I watched this paradigm shift, which was a three day um, event. And when it finished, I got on the phone, or, well, I emailed out and I said, please get in contact with me. I want to, um, I want to become a consultant with Bob Proctor. And it was the fastest, quickest decision I'd made because I knew exactly what I wanted. That is outstanding. Yeah. He's so well yeah. known acro across the planet. He's a, Well, he really is the grandfather of this industry. He's 87 years of age and he's been you know, teaching and working with this material with individuals and businesses for over 60 years. Like he really, he's incredible. And all he wants to do is help people. Along with Bob Proctor, you've, for your book, interviewed other people along the same lines, including Jackie yeah. Carroll, Demo Casanova, Heidi Modrovich, and the others I mentioned at the beginning of our chat. What was it like talking to those people? Well, it was so good because the reason I chose them was one, I wanted them to be in harmony with the material. So I wanted I wanted them to be coming from the right place, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And 
they they also came from a place where money hadn't been handed to them generationally they created their own success so i really wanted to get under the bonnets of the minds of these people and i was at a bob proctor event and made the decision i was going to write this book and i'd written part of it but i suddenly had the idea that i wanted to interview six self-made millionaires I was like, well, where am I going to find them? And they literally showed up and I interviewed them all within a space of six weeks. Wow. <laughs> That's meant so, to be, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And so Brian Matson, um, who's become a dear friend, I went out and visited him with my family in California. Um, oh, well. I Prior to COVID, that. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he was a um, regional vice president for a Fortune 500 company. And so he talked about what got him there. And so much of the things that occur in our life that we see as the difficulties or, or the stages that, you know, those difficulties create who we then become. So it's a little bit like going to the gym. And, you know, um, if you haven't been to the gym for a long time and you go in and, you know, day one or two, you've got a bit of pain. Well, that's the pain from your muscles and growing. And it's the same with this material. We have to grow into the person there that we want to be. Yeah. So, you know, in the each of these stories, they talk about the, the issues that they faced, the difficulties, the hardships and, and, you know, the decisions that they made moving forward. I love your book. It's fantastic. It's certainly every now and then I even go back and listen to bits and pieces of the audio because you recorded a little while ago. Um, it's just really inspirational and it does drive me to stay on that path because you ride in your analogy with the gym. It, it takes time and there is pain. You learn, you learn stuff and you realize that I've, you know, been thinking wrong my whole life. I've been hanging mm -hmm. on to that, like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees thing. And to actually really start believing that and knowing that more than believing that there's like two steps forward, one step backwards until it just becomes that new paradigm. Oh. Absolutely. And Simone, I quite often use the example of, remember as a kid when you used to ride, learn to ride a bike and you made this decision, you wanted to learn the bike, to ride the bike. And it didn't matter what happened, you were going to, you're going to ride that bike. Um, you'd fall off, you'd scratch your knees, you could have ended up with a broken arm or, you know, grazes, blood, whatever. Yeah. But you keep getting back on the bike. That's right. Again, keep and going. And then you keep going. And so many of us have been conditioned really to give up. Well, this is about not giving up and continue to get up, get back on the bike and understand you may take two steps forwards, one step back, but success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If you're taking action towards your goal every day, you're successful. That's right. That is the success. It's not the outcome. That's the success. It's, it's not. And that's, so I think that's the key here is the journey. we are so conditioned that our success is the outside stuff. But when we have the outside stuff, it's short lived. This emotion of, you know, when you get a car or you might get a house or you might go and get a new job, it disappears, that feeling. Whereas every, that's why we need to keep setting goals because as a human being, it's all about growth. And we can compare that to nature. A plant doesn't just stop growing, it mm. continues to grow and that's what we're that's our purpose is and it us. also it takes its time you know it's not like a beautiful flower from one second to the next it takes days weeks for it to become oh, that and i'm so pleased that you said something about a flower because i love the story that bob sh shares about a rose he said you can't force a rose to block to bloom you can't pick those petals and force it apart. But if you actually watch a rose unfold, you can't even see it occurring in front of you. And to me, that's what happens with this material. You literally are growing and you can't see it. And then bang, it, it you know, you're in full bloom. Oh, but you beautiful. can't force it. You yeah. can only do today's work today. Exactly. All right. Well, along with writing and publishing your book and recording your audio book, you mentioned earlier, you're a mum of four, you run an agricultural operation with your husband. And if that isn't enough to keep you busy, you're also an in-demand success coach with your programs, uh, Mind Shift for Success, helping people live the way they truly want. I've got two questions. How the heck yeah. do you fit all that in? <laughs> Are you sleeping? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's very interesting. It's a good question to ask, actually, Simone. So, um, yeah, so when I had my first two children, 
both, both my husband and I realised, hmm, yep, I think we're workaholics. <laughs> so um, I was always one of those people that was in the busy doing mode, multitasking and, you know, 50 million things going on at once. But through, you know, the last five years of working with Bob, working on myself, I learned to create a lot of order in my life. And um, I'm very effective at what I do, but I actually work less now than what I ever have. So I work between the hours of nine to three, you know, during the day, depending on when the kids are. And, you know, that's the time when I'll probably go to the gym as well. Um, and if I have my meetings and then I work two evenings a week, one hour each, and I don't work on weekends. Everybody wants so, that lifestyle, Rachel. They all need to leave, uh, listen to yeah. your book. Well, and the, the way I wrote or, you know, in listening to the book was that it was something that you could go back to. So, you know, if you've got two minutes, listen to two minutes or read two minutes. There is something in there that you can pick up at each time. Yeah. Um, and the feedback I've got is that so many people who don't read have read it. Mm. They've been you know, inspired and, and they've read it from cover to cover. But it's written in, or, and you know, in listening to it, three sections. So one's to give you a bit of an overview. The middle part is some stories. And then the third part is really about daily habits for success. Because I found that, you know, you might read material from people and they talk about, you know, affirmations or they talk about um, listening or meditating, but not actually the purpose behind it. And when you understand the purpose, you can start to, you know, make the application for yourself. What can people expect when they reach out to you for the success coaching? Do you work with them one-on-one -on -one and do you do it online? How does that, that work? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a good, good question. So I um, will generally do what I call a discovery call with somebody and find out where they're at, where they want to be and what do they think's holding them back. And then um, if, you know, I'm feeling that we're a good match, then um, we'll move forward and, and start, I'll move them into an area of a coaching program that I think would be most suitable for them. And as I said, thinking to results is probably the main one that I really direct people to because it's the one that I did and it's the one that created such change and a shift in my life and with the many clients I've worked with now. And then over a six month period, we work together um, with clients that are, you know, in my state in, in ta Tasmania um, and also, you know, interstate and, and I've got a few overseas clients as well that join in. And it really is about once a week we get together, I will teach you the material and help you then apply that out into your life. So it's like me stepping you through, taking you by the hand, guiding you through 12 lessons, finding out what it is that you really want in life, not what you think you can do, but what you truly want personally and professional and for some people they've actually never given themselves permission to go there mm. i was one of those people so i can or i can really help people with that um because it's like that tap's been rusted shut yeah. um so we want to just start levering and turning that on um the second thing is really focusing on person's knowing doing gap you know we know that we procrastinate we know that there's things that we need to be doing that we're not doing why is that and that's working out what are our habits that aren't productive and creating some new productive habits in place and beliefs. And mm. uh, we teach, I teach people how to use their mind. So again, it's, as I said, it's something that we're not taught how, how to use and it's our most powerful tool. We've been really taught through school that we have to, you know, that we're an empty cup and we have to be filled with all this knowledge that we then kind of spit back out. We get assessed on it. That's right. Yep. I love the way that. you talk about that in your book, <laughs> that it's who's the best at remembering. <laughs> That's basically it, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, spitting it back out, whereas actually it's not true. You've already born with infinite potential inside of you. We actually have to work out how to access it and draw it out. Yeah. You know, you'll have ideas that nobody else has ever had. You know, you look at an artist and they, and they paint and they draw. It's completely different to somebody else. Why? Because they're the ideas that have come through their mind. And so it's helping you to express what those ideas are, whether it's a business, whether it's a, um, you know, a new career, whether it's art, whatever it might be for you. And then really, you know, as I say, helping you to react, um, learn not to react to outside circumstances, because that's how we're all conditioned to react mm. the, rather than learning from the inside out, how to operate, how to create our own economy, how to create the life that we want inside out. Oh, this sounds so inspiring. I'm oh. sure you're going to get people hitting you up for this. Now, not only 
for your success coaching, but your amazing book that um, you've actually transferred into audio book, it's up and available. And you, I want to talk about the recording process because you took the path mm. of recording remotely and sending through your files to me via email. And I was eating them up very quickly, I can <laughs> tell you. As soon as you sent them, I was like, oh, I need to be listening to this stuff. But how did you find that process working with me uh, when you were recording it there? man you were absolutely fantastic it was really easy you know i'd been sitting on it for a while in regards to um you know getting my book on audio and you know the way the nature of the world and understanding you know how this stuff works i saw you comment on somebody's linkedin post that was connected with me and i saw brisbane audiobooks and i reached out and i said i need some help can you tell me a little bit about what you do and it was just so easy. I felt straight away it was a, a great fit and you gave me a bit of an overview, but it was so clear and the steps. And for me, that's really important. I want to have clarity and order in my life. And because you were able to offer that, um, you also made it sound like it would be an easy process for me to do. Guided me through it all. Um, and you said, look, just do this, do this. And then I'd send things back. I was like, right, now we need this. Um, you know, you were able to listen to things and be able to fine tune, which was really good because I found that I had this fabulous environment that, that worked really well, but you could tweak things so that the quality was even better. So in the whole process, you know, you just kept telling me what you needed and I, I was able to deliver on it because your guidance was so good. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Well, I think it's turned out fantastically. And your narration, one of my things I pride myself on is having the author narrate their work, because obviously, you know it best, and you know your subject inside out. You've, you know, written this amazing book about it. You've talked to the people that created it, or, you know, really grown the whole subject with Bob Proctor and, and the other guys that you've interviewed and ladies. And now your success coaching. Um, what's the next step for you, Rachel? Hmm. <laughs> I love that. What is the next step? I've actually been getting to the next point for myself and going back through the material again myself because I need a new goal because a lot of the things that I've been putting in place have actually occurred. So yeah. I'm looking at co-authoring another book with a number of business women from around Australia. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that's that's in the winds. That sounds pretty and, cool. Yeah. And um also, uh, there's a, yeah, there's a few things in regards to business that I'm looking at expanding. Um, so I've been working with um, some people locally in their businesses. Uh, they're what I call an unconscious competent in that they, they're already successful in their lives, um, but they don't have, know how to translate that out to whether it's their team or their family. So I'm doing a lot more work with people like that. So yeah, there's a few things and we're wanting to renovate some stuff at the house. So that's one of my goals. And um, I managed to sponsor a village with um, the Unstoppable Foundation, who is uh, the charity that I've popped at the end of my book. And it was one of my goals that I had absolutely no idea how I was gonna do. So I would also like to you know, sponsor another village this year and that's based in Kenya. So what happens is that these um, community of around 70 people, they end up learning the same program that I'm delivering to my clients. So mm. they will get taught this within their school environment. And it's beautiful. They've been on um, on Zooms with Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher. You, uh, excuse me, are you joking? You are getting your program taught in schools. I'm just going to give you a round of applause. Oh, well, it's not my program. This is Bob Proctor's program, but it's being delivered. So I'm able to sponsor... Um, children and adults so that they can learn this material well that's so, so wonderful that's such it, a good and thing it's amazing because it's something that i wanted to happen in australia um and we're not ready for it and mm. here it is being delivered in kenya so it is it's pretty phenomenal and it's all about being able to help it's not a handout it's about an empowerment where rather than what would happen the kids would have education but then there was nobody collecting water there was nobody harvesting and you know helping out in the paddock so They've really changed the model so that, you know, everybody's being taught. It's not just students, but their parents as well and their communities. So they're becoming sustainable in agriculture, um, with fresh water, with their education. So it's a real, yeah, uh, really? something I've been passionate about for a very, for since I was about 12. So I'm really, yeah. Oh, stoked. that's good. So <laughs> something that you were passionate about at 12 is coming to fruition. So that's, again, never give up. Just keep going. Absolutely. And I'd have to say that if you are sitting on thinking about doing an audio book, reach out to Simone because 
seriously, the process for me was so simple and easy. And if it's something that you're thinking about, just do it. It's done. And then it's, it's you know, out there because otherwise you're holding back your amazing material from the world because people really are loving audiobooks right now. Yeah, they are. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. So where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so you can um, either hop onto my website on www.racheldowney.com.au or you can reach out to me um, via email at rachel at racheldowney.com.au. Awesome. I really appreciate you having a chat with me today. Thanks again for doing your audio book with me because I've learned a lot from listening to it. And yeah, I wish you all the best of success for your future. It's going to be bright. I know it because you've got the right paradigm. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And my guests from around the world. Thank you for being a part of this show. The Simone Filer Podcast. Catch you next time. It's a wrap. <laughs>